Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Washington Ethical Society. I'm Karen Schofield Leka. My pronouns are per and hers, short for person, and I am the officiant this morning. First off, happy Father's Day, happy Juneteenth, happy Pride Month, all amazing things to celebrate. And today is also the final platform with our interim senior leader, Lynn Cox. We are here for hybrid platform. So whether you are on Zoom, here in the hall, or watching uh, or listening to the recording later, welcome to everyone. We are one community united across time and space as we gather together to affirm our values and commit to a better world. If you're on Zoom, please check the chat for tips and a welcome from today's Zoom usher. I will read greetings from our online attendees in just a few moments. So set your chat setting to everyone. <laughs> In-person visitors, that's all of you, please stop by the welcome table after platform today to speak to a greeter or to our membership coordinator, Maceo Thomas. And online visitors, we invite you to send an email to Maceo at Maceo T, that's M-A-C-E-O-T, at ethicalsociety.org. If you are a visitor watching this recording later, this invitation is for you as well. You can fill out a connection form at tiny.cc slash westconnects. I'll read a few of the greetings that folks have written into the chat online friends while I'm doing that you might want to get a candle to light during our candle lighting ceremony so Joe Klein says good morning everyone <laughs> and Paul Baker who is serving as our zoom chat host is saying hello to everyone and a warm welcome so great It is good to connect and to share this time together. Once you're prepared, I invite you to settle in wherever you are as we continue to gather. Our opening words this morning are from interim leader Lynn Cox. They write, reaching across time and space, seeking the highest together, we create holy ground. In our arrivals and our departures, in our breathing in and our breathing out, in our gathering in and our letting go, each moment brings us to new awareness of meaning and purpose. Let us gather in peace. Let us gather in struggle. Let us gather in strength. We begin our platform with music. Good morning, Wes. Leah here. I just want to say that when I applied for the music director position in December of 2019, the inside of my crystal ball was pretty cloudy. And I, like all of you, had no way to predict how the coming year and years would unfold. None of us expected a pandemic. I wasn't aware that there was going to be a change of leadership at WES. And I can say having gone through those years, having experienced the, the tumult, the change, the, the unpredictability of all that we have experienced together, I couldn't be more grateful to have had the leadership of Lynn Cox at WES, whose clarity, focus, directness, consistency absolutely helped me to be able to show up at my best and serve in unpredictable, unexpected ways. Lynn and I have worked together virtually now for two years to serve this community. And although, uh, our collective crystal ball continues to be cloudy. None of us know exactly 
how we'll move forward. I'm grateful for the time, the opportunity to speak with you, to hear your ideas and your inputs about music and your intentions for each Sunday, for each platform, for the community as a whole. Thank you, Lynn, for being such a wonderful, easy leader to work with. Without knowing how any of our experience will be next, Wes, Lynn, myself, I'm grateful for the time with you. And I wish you and your family all the best moving forward. Welcome once again. Each week, we read our statement of purpose as a reminder of our shared values. If you are interested in taking a turn to read the statement of purpose, you can sign up at tiny.cc slash read SOP. Today's reader is Patty Absher, a longtime member of WES, who is active in our immigration justice team, the stewardship team, and the Afghan welcome team. Welcome, Patty. The Washington Ethical Society is a humanistic congregation that affirms the worth of every person. We strive through our relationships to elicit the best in the human spirit. With faith in human goodness, we appreciate each person's unique capacities. We joyfully celebrate together and support each other through life. We nurture a sense of reverence and responsibility for each other and the earth. We warmly, warmly invite you to join our community of children and adults as we work for a world where love and justice cross all borders.
Thank you, Patty. If you're joining us from afar and have a candle at home, I invite you to light it now as Patty lights our community candle and I share our candle lighting words. May we kindle within us the warmth of compassion, the light of understanding, and the fire of commitment to build a brighter future for all. Today's platform is about our calling, individually and collectively, and remaining committed to the journey through the beginnings, endings, and complexities of life. Today's time for all ages has something to say about that. It's gonna hop away, hold on. No. Hi, I'm Lynn Cox. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm the outgoing interim senior leader here at the Washington Ethical Society. I'm here with some of my staff colleagues, Maceo Thomas, the membership coordinator, Robin Kravitz, the communications coordinator, and Dara Miles, who is the SEEK coordinator. And with Karen's help, we're going to tell a story about being brave. This is Dragons and Giants by Arnold Lobel. I don't know if the story happened exactly this way, but I believe it's true. Frog and Toad were reading a book together. The people in this book are brave. They fight dragons and giants, and they're never afraid. I wonder if we're brave. Frog and Toad looked into a mirror. We look brave. Yes, but are we? Frog and Toad went outside. We can try to climb this mountain. That should tell us if we are brave. Frog went leaping over rocks and Toad came puffing up behind him. They came to a dark cave a big snake came out of the cave. Hello, lunch. The snake opened her mouth wide. Frog and Toad jumped away. Toad was shaking. I am not afraid. They climbed higher and they heard a loud noise. Many large stones were rolling down the mountain. Oh, no. <laughs> I am not afraid. They came to the top of the mountain. The shadow of a hawk fell over them. Tasty morsels. We are not afraid. We are not afraid. Frog, sorry. They ran down the mountain very fast. They ran past the place where they saw the avalanche. They ran past the place where they saw the snake. They ran all the way to Toad's house. I am glad to have a brave friend like you, Frog. Toad jumped into the bed and pulled the covers over his head. And I'm happy to know a brave person like you, Toad. Frog jumped into the closet and shut the door. <laughs> Toad stayed in the bed and Frog stayed in the closet. They stayed there for a long time, just feeling very brave together. That's the end. Thank you to Indara, Maceo, Robin, and Karen for helping out with the story. <laughs> so Frog and Toad went on an adventure. Each week, we ring this chime in solidarity with people around the world. 
Today, I am particularly mindful of yet another senseless mass shooting this week at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Vestavia Hills, Alabama, and the millions displaced by massive flooding in India and Bangladesh. And that amid that sorrow, we can celebrate the promise of freedom that is Juneteenth, the honor of fathers, and the approval of COVID vaccines for kids from six months to five years old. <laughs> Long time coming, we're glad that it's here. As we listen to the chime, let us remember our connection to each other and the world around us. Let us open our hearts to compassion for those who suffer. And let us commit ourselves to the work that calls for our love. So as we continue with our meditation today, I invite you to take a nourishing breath. Feel um, how it feels in your body to take in that breath, to release a breath. As people who work for a world where love and justice cross all borders, it's our relationships that help us to sustain and bring, sustain, sustain us and to bring joy, that helps us to keep up our energy for the mission. We remember our relationships with the past. We remember our goals. We remember our relationships with each other. Even as relationships change, they leave an impact. Staying connected with life is what helps us adapt to change and to create change. So let's breathe in and out and remember our relationships. So this is a movement meditation and I invite you to participate or not in the movements in a way that fits your well-being. And that might mean um, not moving at all or modifying the movements or putting a little extra bounce in the movements it's that, if that's what your body needs. but. Regardless, I would encourage you to be mindful of your neighbors and their personal space. So if you want to stand, you can do that. Maybe you want to move into the aisles a little bit if your neighbors would prefer to remain in place. Okay, so standing or sitting as you are comfortable and able. We'll start by remembering our ancestors, our legacies of inspiration, the people to whom we are accountable. Breathe in and remember the relationships that uphold us. And if you're comfortable bending down or even reaching down with your arms, we're going to reach down to the grassroots. Bending over, you can rise up. And now we remember our fellow change agents, our friends and allies and support networks that give us strength and solidarity and we're reaching out in solidarity, reaching out in solidarity. And then after we reach out, we remember our goals and the world we dream about, our aspirations, the values we're growing into, hope and faith in our ability to grow. We reach up to the stars. And while our arms are up, keep them high and we're gonna sway because we remember that change is part of life will be rooted and flexible, will blow with the winds of change. Here we are blowing with the winds of change. So with all of that in mind, let's again reach down to the grassroots. Reach out in solidarity. And reach up to the stars. 
and blow the winds of change. One more time, we're going to reach down to the grassroots and out in solidarity. We're going to reach for the stars and blow with the winds of change. And you can let your arms go. If you were standing, you can sit. Remember that rest is also part of the work of change. So take a breath, let it out. We continue our meditation in silence and in the music that follows.
Our reading today is The Seven of Pentacles by Marge Piercy. Under a sky the color of pea soup, she is looking at her work, growing away there actively, thickly like grapevines or pole beans as things grow in the real world, slowly enough. If you tend them properly, if you mulch, if you water, if you provide birds that eat insects a home and, a win and winter food, if the sun shines and you pick off caterpillars, if the praying mantis comes and the ladybugs and the bees, then the plants flourish, but at their own internal clock. Connections are made slowly. Sometimes they grow underground. You cannot tell always by looking what is happening. More than half the tree is spread out in the soil under your feet. Penetrate quietly as the earthworm that blows no trumpet. Bite persistently as the creeper that brings down the tree. Spread like the squash plant that overruns the garden. Gnaw in the dark and use the sun to make sugar. Weave real connections, create real nodes, build real houses. Live a life you can endure. Make love that is loving. Keep tangling and interweaving and taking more in. A thicket and bramble wilderness to the outside, but to us interconnected with rabbit runs and burrows and lairs. Live as if you liked yourself, and it may happen. Reach out, keep reaching out, keep bringing in. This is how we are going to live for a long time, not always. For every gardener knows that after the digging, after the planting, after the long season of tending and growth, the harvest comes. Uh, so I'm told that Zoom remained recalcitrant, and I apologize to our would-be Zoom attendees, but they're going to have to watch the recording later. So I ignited something of a debate among the staff this week as we prepared for today's platform. We considered the pros and cons of various stories for the Time for All Ages segment of the platform, and I appreciate my colleagues for their support, and their ability to envision storytelling shenanigans and their flexibility. One of the books we considered was The Hello Goodbye Window by Norton Jester. If you know the Phantom Tollbooth, it's the same Norton Jester. With illustrations by Chris Rashka. Frog and Toad won the debate because hopping around the stage being brave worked a little better for a shared storytelling, but I highly recommend The Hello Goodbye Window for reading aloud with one or two or three loved ones when you can all look at the pictures together. The narrator in the Hello Goodbye window is a kid who describes a routine of spending the night with grandparents and all of the rituals and the traditions they have for their special time together. The book begins, Nana and Poppy live in a big house in the middle of town. There's a brick path that goes to the back porch, but before you get there, you pass right by the kitchen window. That's the hello goodbye window. It looks like a regular window, but it's not. The kitchen is where Nana and Poppy are most of the time, so you can climb up on the flower barrel and tap on the window and then duck down so they don't know who did it. Or you can press your face against the glass and frighten them. If they're not in the kitchen, you can't do any of those things and you have to wait until next time. When the narrator's parents arrive the next day and the book is heading towards ending, the window is important again. Mommy and Daddy pick me up after work. 
I'm glad because I know we're going home, but it makes me sad too because I have to leave Nana and Poppy. You can be happy and sad at the same time, you know. It just happens that way sometimes. When we leave, we always stop at the window and pull kisses goodbye. When you look from the outside, Nana and Poppy's house has lots of windows, but there's only one hello goodbye window, and it's right where you need it. The narrator's family in this book understands the importance of honoring transitions. Change is inevitable. Special events, extraordinary circumstances, and opportunities for connection and growth are all times when there might need to be a hello and a goodbye. It helps if you know what to expect. And when we have some kind of framework for making meaning in the moment of transition, it helps when there's room for emotions. You can be happy and sad at the same time, you know. It just happens that way sometimes. Here at West, you are once again at a transition point. We have been on an adventure during the interim period. You examined your history and heritage. You navigated changes in lay and professional leadership. You lifted up your connections with your national organizations and your local justice partners. You affirmed your statement of purpose and lived out your mission. You looked toward the future by supporting new technology, ambitious fundraising, strategy Saturday planning, and an exciting search for a new leader. And all of that is part of the interim adventure. And that's not all of the changes over the last two years. Members and lay leaders and staff pivoted so much in adapting to the pandemic and the growing influence of a COVID normalized world you might feel like a music box ballerina. Pivot, 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 pivot. You transitioned to Zoom and through various Zoom updates, some of which are more recalcitrant than others, always on Saturday night. And then you collaborated your way into hybrid platform. And all the while you coped with major national and international events, as well as transformational events in your own lives. Your development, maturity, and adaptation as a congregation will continue past the horizons of my time with you. Yet this is a transition point. This is a threshold of change as you and I let go so that you can reach out again and welcome your new clergy leader. So it's a good time to look back on and learn from and to maybe commit to doing things differently from the past as you move into the future. Reach into the past for encouragement and lessons learned, but don't dwell there. Reach into the future for new opportunities to follow your values and your mission, but hold those plans lightly. Be here now in this liminal place and breathe with whatever emotions are coming up. You can be happy and sad at the same time, you know. It just happens that way sometimes. One of the common threads running through the past, present, and future is your sense of mission. I would even say your shared calling. You are called by conscience, called by ancestors of choice and legacy, called by connections with life and love. You are called to witness to the inherent worth of every person and to humanize the spaces you inhabit. You are called to liberation and to justice that reverberates through the interdependent web of existence. Staying true to that calling is an adventure. There will be mountainous obstacles. There will be dangers. There might be snakes. Sometimes the change will seem to come all at once like an avalanche. Staying true to your calling is hard, and you are brave and you can do hard things. You are nimble and adaptive. Your metaphorical amphibious legs can help you leap higher than you realize. Choose from the past what you will use as your foundations and fulcrums. Today, as we consider Pride Month and Juneteenth and Father's Day, you might be having a lot of feelings about heritage and history. Mentors who either were there for you or weren't. 
ways in which the larger society and your family either did or didn't help you develop a sense of competence and self-worth. From Juneteenth, we learn that oppression never lets go with one single declaration. And we need to take an active role in continuing the work of liberation. And we learn that we can be grateful for those who showed us the way to move toward freedom. From LGBTQ plus history, we learn that celebration and life and beauty and direct action for justice can all be the same thing. We learn that oppressors never stop trying to erase us to block our joyful existence in public, and we can never stop living as our whole selves and making room for others to do the same. My hope for Father's Day is that we can all learn about new ways to support and guide the rising generations, ways that let go of toxic gender messages and instead honor the strength inherent in nurturing. In LGBTQ plus justice, in racial justice, in anti-oppressive parenting and teaching and mentoring, it is possible to find legacies and ancestors that can help ground you and support you in your shared calling. And when I frame your direction that you're moving as a calling, I don't mean to make it lofty and inaccessible. Following a calling isn't all grand sweeping gestures and decisive victories. Following a calling is taking everyday ethical action, build one deed upon another, find companions and collaborators and co-conspirators to keep doing everyday ethical action. The steady pull of ethics, of love and justice, of inherent worth, of ecological balance, calls you to do the next right thing. It's not fancy, it's rarely exciting or dramatic, and the everydayness of it can also be an obstacle just like the snakes and the avalanche. It is tempting to give up when there aren't immediate results. But following a calling is a song that flows forward one beat at a time. This is what I think Marge Percy meant in her poem, The Seven of Pentacles. Connections are made slowly, and sometimes they grow underground. You cannot always tell by looking what is happening more than half the tree is spread out in the soil under your feet. Penetrate quietly as the earthworm that blows no trumpet. Fight persistently as the creeper that brings down the tree. Spread like the squash plant that overruns the garden. Gnaw in the dark and use the sun to make sugar. Growth, persistence, connection. These are things that happen organically. Progress can be slow. It may take time before you can measure it, and it matters when you look beyond the obvious signs to the deeper truths of change. Growing can be difficult, even dangerous or scary sometimes, yet following your calling can be as natural and as simple as growing like a squash plant. In Marge Percy's poem, the local habitat isn't a monoculture. There are earthworms and squash and trees and vines and pole beans and birds and bees and ladybugs. All different forms of life, each doing their part to bring vibrancy to the interdependent thicket. There is a shared calling here and also individual callings that help each person connect to the larger hope. I will say again that you as the Washington Ethical Society community are called to witness to the inherent worth of every person and to humanize the spaces you inhabit. You are called to liberation and to justice that reverberates through the interdependent web of existence. Yet, each person's part of that calling can be different. You are bound together with common cause and with interdependent caring relationships but no two people will have exactly the same way of living out that calling. So ask yourself, what part of the mission is speaking to you in this moment? What is your next move in the future of Wes? Maybe it's compassionate presence with the pastoral care associates or nurturing the rising generation in Sikh or providing a true welcome to every visitor. Whether your place in the thicket is as a pole bean seeking the sun 
a ladybug defending what is growing, a bee pollinating with new ideas and the continuity of life. Say yes to your calling. Say yes to being part of the interdependent community. Say yes to staying on the adventure, even when it's mundane, even when it's scary, even when it means taking the risk of change and growth. Say yes. For the last two years, my part in promoting life and love and liberation has aligned with yours. And now I'm called onward. My yes is taking me to a season of caregiving, discernment, reading, and writing. Your yes is taking you to open doors, to inclusive community, to a clear moral voice in organizing for justice. I'm happy and sad at the same time. Yet I trust you to continue to follow your calling, to keep humanizing the spaces that you're in, to care for one another, to, hold, to continue to hold and to build a world where love and justice crosses all borders. Take care and be well. May it be so. Thank you so much. After community sharing time, we'll, uh, after some music, we'll have community sharing time. I'm sorry that we'll miss our Zoom commenters today, but I hope um, people watching the recording will write some comments into the chat of the recording. So folks in the hall are gonna be able to, to speak into the microphone about what resonated with you in the platform. So in this time in between, you might prepare for community sharing by reflecting on a personal experience or an activity at WES that illustrates the values that we're lifting up today. So as we contemplate, rest, and reflect, let us experience the beautiful beauty of the musical response.
This is the time when we add our own voices to the morning, sharing our reflections on the platform or what resonates in our own lives. Our online participants are gonna do their commenting later in the Zoom uh, chat or the, the comments on Facebook. Um, so we have time for those who are here in the hall to share their thoughts. You can come and step to this microphone, um, leave space between yourselves for our appropriate social distancing. You can take your mask off while you're at the microphone, but then please put it back on before you go back to your seat. Please. Good, good morning, people of Wes. Um, you have to stand uh, later. <laughs> I, w I wanted to, to thank Lynn for, for um, all she did, all she's done. But um, actually, I came up here to give applause to the chorus. Um, <laughs> I wanted you to know that meditation song was done so, so beautiful. And I did not want that to go unacknowledged. Thank you, Vince. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Jeff B. Hall here. I couldn't get the name tag because I was late this morning because I couldn't find my house keys. And so it <laughs> cost me half an hour. Um, Lynn, you have done a wonderful job these past two years. Everybody ought to know it. And and for those people who are, can't get in for, for uh, uh, because of electronic difficulties, cyber difficulties, then at least this will be preserved. I'll always remember you for one thing because there are two things I really love about Wes. One is, one is our Winterfest productions. Yep. And two is Stone Soup. <laughs> and, yeah, right. <laughs> and in November 2020, I was miserable because we couldn't have either one. And it was like, ah. And uh, I'm sure Betsy, if she were here, would say, God, it was a pain in the butt living with Jeff <laughs> in November of 2020 because he could. You're just miserable. And I remember speaking to you, and I believe it was David Pelkey's memorial service. And couldn't we just do like, you know, maybe a, a grab and go, you know, have people come and get the soup. And, but you said yes. And you put some <laughs> some vibrancy and, and favor back in my life because I was able to cook. And we had people out there on the table. And when you go to the West website, that's what they show people around the table eating, which is what we really like to do. <laughs> Well, though we don't have our usual uh, external participation, we do have some virtual comments to be shared. Hey everybody, Good morning. I'm Lynn Cox, my pronouns are they, them. I'm the interim leader here at the Washington Ethical Society. We begin today with memory. We remember our ancestors, our role models, our loved ones, the people who instructed us on in how to be in right relationship. Hi, Lynn. Thanks so much for your wise leadership and strong guidance for Wes over these past two years. Just wishes. Hey, Lynn. Thanks for everything you've done for Wes. It's been great having you here for the last two years. May you have every success in the future and lots of joy and love. Take care. Everything, everything is holding We'll also keep working on being an anti-racist, anti-oppressive, multicultural community. Even well-meaning people carry the unconscious baggage of a culture that is not affirming for all. We can't rely on our kind hearts alone to create an inclusive, welcoming learning environment for people of all ages. When we study systemic oppression together, when we examine the policies and practices of our community for continuous improvement, when we join our neighbors in advocating for social justice and racial justice, we are increasing the space where someone can learn and grow and be part of this community without fear of harm from marginalization. Thanks for everything, Lynn. We just wanted to say it's been so great working with you and appreciate all that you've done for the West community. Good luck on your next adventure. Thank you so much. Bye, Lynn. Bye. 
everything is here at all. Think of when so challenging thing to come. Hi, Lynn. I just want to say thank you for everything over um, my term as being the youth coordinator at West. I appreciate your support and advocacy um, in my role. I wish you the best um, with your future endeavors. Thank you once again. Thank you, Hey, Lynn, it's been amazing working with you for these last two years, being part of this community, uh, being part of this transition to um, post-pandemic and new leadership. Thank you. All the best. Hi, Lynn. I will be forever grateful for your skills, your wisdom, your guidance, and your profound ability to reflect back the best qualities of us at West, which in my mind is the definition of love. Never doubt that you made a difference at West. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn, for everything that you've done in a very difficult situation at Wes. Hi, Lynn. I just wanted to say thank you so much for the time that you spent with us as Wes's interim senior leader. You've said a lot of things in your platforms that have really resonated with me and really meant a lot. So just a big thank you for all of that and for the time you spent with us. Thank you, Lynn, from Pat. Andrea and Agustin, who's with his grandparents now. Thank you, Lynn. Toad baked some cookies. These cookies smell very good, said Toad. He ate one, and they taste even better, he said. Toad ran to Frog's house. Frog, frog, cried Toad. Taste these cookies that I've made. Frog ate one of the cookies. These are the best cookies I have ever eaten, said Frog. Frog and Toad ate many cookies, one after another. You know, Toad, said Frog with his mouth full, I think we should stop eating. We will soon be sick. You are right, said Toad. Let us eat one last cookie, and then we will stop. Frog and Toad ate one last cookie. There were many cookies left in the bowl. Frog, said Toad, let us eat one very last cookie, and then we will stop. Frog and Toad ate one very last cookie. We must stop eating. And we will indeed have one very last cookie shortly. Just as we share our perspectives in this community, so too do we share our resources and gifts. Here at West, we split the Sunday collection between our operating budget and a fund dedicated to justice and compassion. This month, half of the offering is dedicated to the Wanda Alston Foundation. The mission of the Wanda Alston Foundation, or WAF, is to eradicate homelessness and poverty for LGBTQ youth between the ages of 18 and 24. The Wanda Alston Foundation opened its doors in 2008 as the only housing program in Washington, D.C., solely dedicated to offering pre-independent transitional living and support services to homeless or at-risk LGBTQ youth in all eight wards. Let's all take a moment to prepare to respond to the invitation to generosity. If you're someone who gives by text or are in front of a device, you can navigate to the donation page on our website, or uh, you can get out your phone or tablet and navigate to that page now. 
If you're here in person, there is a basket at the back of the hall to receive your gift. Half of your undesignated gift will go to Wes and the other half will go to our Share the Plate partner for the month. I'll pause for a moment so all who are able can prepare to respond with generosity. On the slide, you'll see the number to give by text, 202-335-1885. And you can also make a gift online through the donate button on our website at ethicalsociety.org. Thank you for your generosity. We will now receive your gifts and the gift of Josh's music. Thanks again, Lynn. I am open, I am willing to be open, but be so strange, it dishonors all those before us, with me up into the light of the change, there is hurting. In my family, there is sorrow throughout my town. There is panic throughout the nation. There is wailing all around. But I am open. I am willing. To be hopeless, to be so strange, it dishonors all the ones before us. Be up to the light of change. May the children see more clearly. May their elders be more wise. May the light of change give up, even when, even when it burns our eyes. Make me a mighty yoke to hold my confusion. Make me a desert. Hold my fear, make me a sunset, hold my wonder, and make me an ocean to hold all my tears. Yeah, cause I am open, Lord, I am willing to be hopeless. Oh, it be so strange, you know, it dishonors all those before us. Lift me, lift me up into the light of change. Lift me up to the light of change. Well, thanks to Josh and to Tom for that great music. And thank you so much to the many people who helped to create this morning's time together. Thank you to our staff, including Linda Irzari, Indara Miles, Robin Kravitz, Maceo Thomas, Tom Hutton, and for just a little bit longer, interim senior leader, Lynn Cox. Thank you to interim music coordinator, Leah Th Morris, the West Chorus, Tom Bishop, Josh Blinder, and all who helped create music today. Thank you to John and Abby Dakin, who created our slides. Thanks to Alex Abbott, who is hosting our upcoming virtual coffee hour. Fingers crossed. Thank you to Zoom usher Paul Baker, Yeoman's work, even when it doesn't work. And tech team members John Lika, Levi Lika, Robin Pfeiffer, and John Pfeiffer. Thank you to in-person greeters, Brusola, 
Abiola, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I've mispronounced it, I can't see it, Abitayo, excuse me, Susan Runner, and Roberta Geyer. At the conclusion of the platform, you can join us for social hour in person around the foyer and out on the patio on this glorious day. Um, hopefully virtual coffee hour on Zoom as well. Uh, thanks also to those who are leading and supporting our work in the weeks to come. You can find information about opportunities to connect in the Sunday links or news and notes emails, but here's some of the latest news. The office will be closed tomorrow for the Juneteenth federal holiday. And then the week to follow includes the UUA General Assembly, which Communications Coordinator Robin Kravitz will be attending, as well as Delegates Trang Duong and Sonia Coopers. All of which is to say that staff response times will be slower this coming week. Sunday Ethical Education for Kids, or SEEK, has concluded for this school year. Beginning July 10th, SEEK coordinator and Dara Miles will host a family listening space in the social hall uh, where kids and their caregivers can listen to the platform while enjoying quiet toys and activities in a movement-friendly atmosphere. Some of us might like that too. Brainstorming for the fall is also underway, so please contact SEEK coordinator and Dara Miles to find out more about ethical education here at WES. The Sci-Fi Book Group meets Sunday, next Sunday, June 26th, after Platform. This month, Leanne Keith Holland is leading a discussion of Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. And next month, Sharon Newworth will lead a discussion of The Assimilated Cuban's Guide to Quantum Santeria by Carlos Hernandez. Contact Adam Briskin Limehouse to learn more about the Sci-Fi Book Club. Our platform speaker next week at 10.30 a.m. Easter will be Dr. Shakobi Wilson. Dr. Wilson is the director of the Center for Community Engagement, Environmental Justice, and Health at the University of Maryland. As an environmental health scientist, he works primarily in partnership with community-based organizations to study and address environmental justice and health issues and translate research to action. Platform is going to take then a break the following week um, so that there's no gathering here at West on July 3rd, and we will resume Platform again on July 10th. Those who wish to attend Platform in, in person should RSVP at tiny.cc slash West Plat oh, sorry, excuse me, tiny.cc slash Platform Reservation. In-person attendees, you need to, as you know, because you're here, you need to bring your vaccination card or a picture of that card, and online attendance will continue to be available most weeks for the foreseeable future, and you are always welcome to tune in by Zoom or later by Facebook. So there is a lot going on. You can see the calendar with upcoming events on the West website. But before we close, we have a few words of ending and appreciation for this two-year interim period. Trang and Lynn. If you take the podium, I'll take it. Hello, I'm Trang Duong, she, her. And I am the president of the Board of Trustees. In finding the right words for this, this ceremony of parting, we are indebted to Lynn's colleague, Chip Roosh. Change is a part of life, and it is part of our community's life at WES. One of the changes we recognize today is the departure of our interim senior leader, Lynn Cox. There is great power in the thresholds of time. Every moment is a beginning and an ending, yet some turning points offer special opportunities for reflection and gratitude. The ending of our interim time together is just such a moment. Lynn, you arrived in August 2020. We knew we were in a transition period and a pandemic and approaching a national election. But we could not know how many changes there would be in the world and in our community. We could not have known how much we would learn or how we would overcome our challenges as a con congregation. You have accompanied us through the mountains and valley valleys of this journey and showed us that we are brave. 
When I arrived in August 2020, I knew that you were a congregation with a commitment to justice, including anti-racism. I knew that you were strong in your identity as humanists. I could not have known how deeply committed that you are to your values or your mission or how you would come together to move your community through this, dare I say it, unprecedented time. As you take your leave, we give thanks for your leadership. Thank you for the comfort and challenge you had offered to us. Thank you for speaking the truth to us in love. As I take my leave, I give thanks to this congregation for your commitment, for your kindness, for your support, for your collaboration. I ask forgiveness for the mistakes that I've made, and I lift up in celebration the shared leadership that we've practiced together. I carry with me all that I have learned here. On behalf of the members, we receive your thankfulness, offer forgiveness, and recognize that it is time for your departure. On behalf of the members, thank you for your time among us, and please forgive us for the mistakes we have made. Even when you are far from us, the things we have learned in the interim time will continue to have an impact. I forgive you and I receive your gratitude. May you continue to learn and grow. I will admire your progress from afar. Do you, the members and friends of the Washington Ethical Society, release the Reverend Lynn Cox from their duties as the interim senior leader? If so, answer, we do. We do. Members and friends, do you offer encouragement to Lynn's journey ahead? We do. Do you, Lynn, release the Washington Ethical Society from your leadership? I do. Do you offer your encouragement to Wes's future journey and to the future that Wes shares with our incoming senior leader? I most enthusiastically do. We give thanks for the time we have shared with our former interim leader, Lynn Cox, in platform, in comfort, in challenge, in witness, in learning, and in leadership. May all of our journeys be filled with meaning and beauty as we move into the future. May it be so. Thank you, Lynn. So um, bear with me a little longer. Uh, and Lynn, you're going to stay here. Um, we uh, wanted to share our gifts of gratitude from the West community and affirm the worth of our outgoing interim senior leader, Lynn Cox. Um, you might recognize some statement of purpose in here. Um, I searched long and hard for a poem or some reading for this moment to express our gratitude. And um, I just couldn't find it until I was driving Friday and I happened to see a bumper sticker on a car that reflected what I wanted to include in this gratitude. So thank you, Green Honda Civic, wherever you are. Those words, six words are kind heart, fierce mind, brave spirit. Again. <laughs> kind heart, fierce mind, brave spirit. Lynn, thank you for your kind heart that helped Wes through our difficult times and our happy moments. You helped us to joyfully celebrate together, especially with the frog and toad stories, and support each other through life. We offer these gifts of hand-painted rocks by Wes members and friends from our heart to yours as a reminder of the joy and love Wes has shared with you over the past two years. And thank you to my lovely assistant and co-conspirator, Sarah Morris, another trustee. Yeah, don't worry about holding them all. They're very heavy. <laughs> okay. Lynn, thank you 
for your fierce mind, you help guide Wes, especially the board, our staff, and lay leaders during this time of interim with reflection on our past and what we hope to see in our future and in our calling for a new settled leader. You helped us to elicit the best in each other and in Wes. We offer this gift certificate to you of, from STEM, a plant-based restaurant in Baltimore, and to Uber Eats, so we may feed and nurture not only your mind, but also your body. Lynn, thank you for your brave spirit. As you traverse this challenging landscape called the COVID-19 pandemic with us, prioritizing our health and mind and spirit, not leaving the most vulnerable of our community behind, and consistently being present for us, even when it got tough. You help to nurture a sense of reverence and responsibility for each other. We offer this gift certificate to Valley View Farms, your favorite garden <laughs> store. Uh, as a means to further your spiritual practice and your love for the earth and its bountiful offerings. Lynn, we thank you for sharing the beauty of your leadership and your wisdom. We offer these flowers, the gift of beauty, to remind you of this light that you have shared with Wes. And we promise that we carry on the work for a world where love and justice cross all borders. Thank you, Lynn, and good wishes to you and your family on your journey ahead. But wait, there's more. <laughs> okay, um, Lynn, Troop 1123 particularly wants to express its thanks to you um, because when you came here, the scout troop, um, you know, first of all, we had about half the number of members that we have now. Um, and we were in the middle of the early stage of the pandemic when the troop had not been able to go on campouts. And, you know, we had, uh, we had really, um, you know, been trying to figure out like, what can we do going forward? Um, under your leadership, we were able to uh, obtain permission to continue to have campouts, you know, your leadership with the reopening committee and, you know, allowed us to, uh, allowed us to do that. Um, and we also, like on every occasion when we have needed something from you, you have responded immediately, if not sooner. <laughs> um, so I, I have really felt that your support for the scout troop has been incredibly positive and therefore, we have a gift for you. Um, we thought that you might enjoy, particularly because of your own previous experience in scouting, one of our troop neckerchiefs, which are both nerdy, they have a math joke, um, and rainbow, which we know is your favorite. <laughs> So the, the joke here is that the troop number 1123 uh, is the beginning of the Fibonacci sequence. It was chosen by the scouts for that reason. And the logo that's on the back of the neckerchief is a, uh, is a, like a graphical representation of that very nerdy thing. Yeah, so there we go. Um, Should I show it off? Yeah, there we go. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Lynn, for all your support for the troop. Uh, yes, you may. Well, actually, why don't you just, uh, yes, you can go ahead and sit. That's fine. <laughs> um, so thanks to Lynn and Trang for that lovely ceremony and for the scouts for that recognition and to everyone who has made this interim time a success. To the community gathered today, thank you all for being a part of platform today. And we're going to now um, move into our closing song. getting all the steps in today. So just a few brief reminders before we close. If you are new to our community, please send an email to our uh, membership coordinator, Maceo Thomas, and introduce yourself. Uh, the virtual coffee hour, nobody here needs to know about, that's okay. But usually where it happens is at tiny.cc slash west coffee hour, but we're all gonna go and be together in just a moment. Um, I now invite you to join me in our closing words for the month. Let us go into the week ahead with compassion, understanding, and commitment, celebrating our interdependence for our hearts and for our quest for a better world. Thank you everyone for being here. We look forward to connecting with you again soon. And as we bid our fond farewell to Lynn, let's sing them out in traditional West fashion. As you journey.
and let's go have one final cookie.